Hey, what's up everyone? So let's talk about upgrading your GPU for Premiere or Blender. This topic is pretty important to me as both a video producer and content creator, and after several projects, it was time for us to look at how we could optimize our production. Both of these NVIDIA GPUs are very good cards, right in the sweet spot for price versus performance, which we think most buyers will have or will consider buying. As with most video cards these days, they aren't exactly cheap, so what kind of performance improvements can you expect if you take the plunge? We hope to answer that today and with some benchmarks, so let's get to it. I'm Rick at Techspin and we've got exciting contests monthly now with our Drive to 5 giveaways. Be sure to connect with us on social media and get the latest reviews by clicking that subscribe button below and that bell icon with new content weekly. So this is the continuation of our previous AMD versus Intel episode. And if you haven't seen that yet, you can check it out here. Don't worry, I'll wait for you. Those results saw a very decent gain with the new Ryzen 3900X. Though if you're using CUDA and have a decent amount of GPU workload while using Premiere, then you'll be looking for a new graphics card. I know we were. And a quick reminder, if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at Techspin Review. There's links below also if you decide to pick up a new graphics card, you can support the channel by using our affiliate links to buy. It'll help us out here with no extra cost to you. And full disclosure, I do test and host episodes for MSI's Procast, and while I do have access to some hardware due to testing, both of these cards were purchased. At Techspin, we always give you our honest reviews and opinions, so let's get started. For the Intel build, we have the 9900K on an MSI MAG Z390 Tomahawk, Samsung 970 EVO 500 gig NVMe M.2 and 64 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 3200. Ryzen 3900X we had on the MSI MEG X570 ACE with an XPG 8200 Pro 256 gig NVMe M.2 which is on par with Samsung and 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB 3000. Cooling was provided by a Corsair H150i 360mm AIO cooler, which is the best case scenario for both of these CPUs. Stock settings were exactly that, with no tweaks in BIOS, so XMP was disabled. Overclocks had XMP enabled, only adjusting the core ratio in BIOS. And we ran all tests three times, and the best of the three was taken. Both the X570 ACE and our Z390 Tomahawk have the latest BIOSes installed, the latest system drivers, and the latest NVIDIA drivers. Premiere testing was done with a 2 minute, 26 second, 1080p project for Avantech, and there was some green screen use throughout, but no LUTs were applied. We rendered with only CPU and then with CUDA enabled, and due to the green screen alter key used, the GPU gets a very good workout with CUDA enabled. Lower times here are better. So, starting with our MSI GTX 1660, last time we saw the stock Intel CPU only time from 5 minutes 7 seconds and 4 minutes 12 seconds at 5 gigahertz versus Ryzen 3900X stock at 4.5 minutes and 3 minutes 20 for an overclock of 4.2 gigahertz. Testing with the GTX 1660 and CUDA enabled cut down the stock Intel times to just 1 minute 39 and the 5 gigahertz OC gets it down to 137. For Ryzen, the 1660 posts a 1 minute 32 second time at 131 with the 4.2 overclock. With 100% GPU for the majority of the render, the bottleneck is of course now the GPU. So we ran out and grabbed a new MSI RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio, a huge, huge card. This ended up being a good thing though, as we had to remove the Tomahawk from the case. And without a case, now swapping the Corsair H150i Pro to the Intel rig was much less of a pain, and consequently, we got better and fairer results with premium CPU cooling. With our new 2070 Super installed, the Intel CPU at stock posts a great 1 minute 16 seconds, and with the 5 gigahertz overclock, we hit 1 minute 12 seconds, the magic mark for me, as we're now rendering in less than half the time of the actual clip. Ryzen at stock with the 2070 Super did 1 minute 8 seconds with 1 minute 3 at overclock, shaving 5 seconds off the total time. That is pretty incredible, no matter which platform you're looking at. Because Premiere can utilize Intel's onboard UHD 630 graphics, we did enable that and the results were worse than using just the 2070 Super, adding an extra 22 seconds, making 1 minute 34 seconds. 
Just for fun, we tried Intel UHD graphics, the 2070 Super in the main PCIe slot, and the 1660 very bottom. However, Premiere rendering favored the 1660 Ti and UHD, maxing them both almost 100%, while the 2070 Super sat around 30% for the most part, dropping to zero occasionally. It also blue screened my first attempt with a WHEA uncorrectable error, but the second attempt completed uh, not the most stable setup. I'm going to speculate that the workload was split three ways and the 2070 was waiting for the other two to catch up with an unimpressive result so we didn't report it. Turning off onboard graphics, last we tried the 2070 as the main and the 1660 Ti at bottom and the result was terrible. First time blue screen and second time finishing at 2 minutes 35 seconds, almost a full minute behind just the 1660 Ti by itself, which finished 1 minute 37 seconds at 5 GHz overclock. Premiere's scheduler barely touched the 2070 at all. Okay, time for conclusions. Within this year, I've actually tested an older GTX 970 and a Zeus GTX 1070 for a Premiere before running out and grabbing these two new cards. Uh, first the 1660 Ti and then the 2070 Super. Uh, looks like a European vacation is on the shelf for this year. <laughs> Though, this might be interesting for you if you're running older hardware and you're looking to upgrade. With CUDA enabled, the MSI GTX 970 I have on hand posts 2 minutes 31 seconds and the Asus Strix GTX 1070 crosses the line at 1 minute 47 seconds. I put it back in the case that I'm using already, so sorry. <laughs> the 1070 is still a fairly decent card with 30% better time than the 970. The 1660 Ti at 139 is 34% faster than the 970 and 7% faster than the 1070. The 2070 Super coming in at 1 minute 16 seconds is not the same price point as either the 970 or 1070, even with inflation, but is 49% more powerful than a 970, and 29% faster than a 1070, and 23% better than a 1660 Ti. Given that this 1660 Ti goes for 300 bucks, and this new 2070 Super is sold out everywhere but evidently runs around 540 to 600, that's a 44% price increase for only 23% more performance. This is an knock against MSI. As with all GPUs, you pay to get better performance with higher cost for top end cards. The takeaway here is if you're not needing the most powerful card right now, the 1660 Ti is actually a very decent upgrade from older hardware. If you need better rendering times or are playing 1440p titles on ultra or even 4K on medium to high settings, the 2070 Super is a very good choice for the money. As we talked about in our last video, if your Premiere timeline uses the GPU a fair amount, you should be able to get a better boost from a simple graphics card upgrade rather than a whole motherboard and CPU bundle. And for gaming, it's a no-brainer. Even with hardware in the last five years, a new graphics card will see the greatest FPS gains. Now for me, I'm really dying to see the NV Link results with the 2070 Super. Uh, information on this kind of configuration is really scarce online for Premiere, with testers focusing on games. So it'll be interesting to see if it actually works for Premiere, and most importantly, if there's a substantial benefit to this kind of configuration, or if it's just better to save up for a top card like the 2080 Ti. If you live in the Taipei area and you have a 2070 super handy and that I could borrow for a day, uh, please do hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. We really appreciate you watching this far and now we want to ask you what kind of setup are you using for Premiere or what GPU are you looking at now? Please let us know in the comments. If this video was useful or if you like cats or if you like the depicted battle between Optimus and Megatron, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button or tell us how we could improve for next time. To see more videos like this, please do subscribe for new content and be sure to click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We always check the comments and we do try to respond to most. So if you have a question or if we miss something, then please do tell us down below. And we'll see you on the next. Bye for now.